You are listening to the Yummy Mummy Podcast, episode number 157. Welcome to the Yummy Mummy Podcast, where you will learn brand new and shockingly different tools to lose weight for the last time. And now, here's your host, certified life and weight loss coach, Laura Conley. Hello, Yummy Mummies. We have a very extra, super duper crazy special episode today because we have a super fun guest. But before we dive into that, I want to make sure that you are on the wait list for the next round of the Yummy Mummy. So go to lauraconley.com and click work with me if you are not already on the wait list for the next cohort. You guys, we have the Susan Hyatt here to talk about the division of labor in the home and the invisible workload and what even is that. And the reason why I'm like so passionate about this is because most of you know, the whole underlying theme, the whole point of the yummy mummy is to free the moms. And I'm noticing that this is another huge trap that we can fall into, not our faults, but we can fall into this trap of doing all the things. And Susan Hyatt is, in my mind, a total expert on this topic. So we're going to just dive into what is the invisible workload? Why does it matter? Why do we care? And how can we move forward and free ourselves from this trap that society puts us in? So without further ado, let me welcome Susan Hyatt to the show. She is a master certified coach. She's my coach. Hello. I got to say that she's my business coach and she's just the loveliest human. You guys, it's going to be a real, you are in for it. So Susan, introduce yourself. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so honored that you're here. (laughs) Am I an honorary yummy mummy? (laughs) I'm so stoked. You are the yummiest. You are very yummy. (laughs) Have you guys seen, have you guys seen her in real life or like on the socials? Cause she's super yummy. Yes. You are a yummy mummy for sure. I'm a yummy mummy. So thank you for that wonderful intro. You are a delight. Y'all, I love coaching Laura because of her <laughs> facial expressions on Zoom. It like <laughs> makes my whole day. <laughs> so this is giving me the morning high that I need. So it's so good because Susan Hyatt and my husband love me for my facial expressions. I told her like on our first call, I was like, do you know that that's like the reason my husband gives for falling in love with me is my facial expressions. So <laughs> Well, it's so easy to fall in love with you. But yes, I am a master certified life coach. I've been coaching for almost 17 years. I am a published author of the book Bear. I am a life and business coach. And one of the things I love talking about is disrupting the invisible workload. Mm -hmm. And what that means is the invisible workload is the mental and emotional burden that most women take on because of just our the way we're raised, programming from culture at large. And you could think of it as a invisible backpack you're wearing that's mm. full of things that create a part-time and dare I say, even extra full-time job for your family, for your workplace, for your community. And I didn't have the words for this when my children were little. Mm. All I knew was that I was doing more and it mm. wasn't fair. (laughs) So now that I have the actual research and language to back me up, I'm here to help free the moms in this way. Yes. I love it. So wait, tell us a little bit about like how that showed up for you in your house. I mean, you gave us kind of an overview, but like, what did that look like? Because I know what it looks like for me sometimes. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, so many ways, but sort of an easy example would be think about if you are a parent, Think about when you register your children for school, who's the first person that the school will call if the child is sick, disruptive, they need to get a hold of you for fundraising, whatever. And I was, up until my son was in the fifth grade, listed first. So what that meant was when I was going about my work day, So I have two children. Ryan is now 25. Cora is now 23. So I'm an empty nester. But at the time when they were younger, Ryan was that kid in class who was ADHD with capital letters. He was running the classroom if the teacher was not a strong leader. And I would get lots of phone calls. (laughs) 
Oh my God. I'm having like foreshadowing of like, what's going to, what my life is going to be like, because my child is the same. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean to tell you. And I was getting worn out with constant, like have to go up to the school, et cetera. And so when he was entering the fifth grade, I finally said, you know what, Scott Hyatt, we are going to list you first. And now you can enjoy and share the load of when something goes sideways during the school day, you can start fielding those calls and see how you like it. <laughs> and that honestly was life-changing for me because it, for those of you listening who are parents and your kid forgets their lunch or a folder or, oh my gosh, it was pajama day and didn't know, I mean, these are simple little examples, but that's in your invisible backpack. And mm. that's one tiny drop in the bucket of, in addition to that, I was the one thinking about and planning mm. what we were going to eat. And I don't know how many of you share that, that load now. I hope you do. But at that point in time in my life, I had just absorbed that job that I was the one that was going to make sure we all ate and we ate well. Hmm. So what did Scott do when you were like, okay, you're going to be number one on the list here? Well, to his credit, he was like, fine, bring yeah. it on. And then yeah. he was like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I mean, then he was like, oh my God. And then it was hilarious to me. Because he really didn't understand what mm. I was managing and how much extra time being the one mm. takes. Yeah. And I know for many of you, part of it is giving up being the one yeah. and giving up control of allowing someone else to help you. Mm. But for me, I don't know if you know that Rumi quote, let go or be dragged. Oh, and that so was, I good. heard that quote and I was like, I am letting go. Cause I've been dragged yeah. through the mud. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's so interesting because I think if you're in a marriage or partnership or whatever, and you're switching the roles around oftentimes, like, for example, my husband, like he'll be, he's totally happy to help. And sometimes he's like, yeah, bring it on. So I just want to like, give voice to that because your partner actually might rise to the occasion more than you think they might not <laughs> like some also, of them, some right, of them won't like it's many that won't but yeah yeah but i love what you're bringing up too about like the release of control it's like if we are going to divide the labor in an equitable manner it's like yeah we have to really let go and like let them do it quote unquote badly in terms of our opinions of how they do things yeah. but that's the perfect way to sum it up that quote right and it's mm -hmm. like some of the things that my husband does and he does them badly like it's who cares like who cares that he does them badly like it does exactly. it literally doesn't matter it's off your plate my husband one of the things he took over years ago was making the bed every morning does he make the bed like I do? No. Does he understand? I still don't. We could call this weaponized incompetence, but I'm like <laughs> the zipper of the throw pillow. This is such a dumb example, oh. right? But like it, he, it's facing zippers, out. It's facing right? out. They're always showing when he does it. He could give a fuck. And I'm just like, whatever, let it go. Okay. I'm not having to make the bed. Yeah. I was talking to my friend about this the other day. She's like, we have the cutest clothes for my kids, like the cutest Hannah Anderson, Gap, blah, 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 whatever. They don't ever wear them or they don't wear them in a matching fashion because I've let my husband dress my kids and they look like ragamuffins running around. And I'm like, wow, that's like, that's impressive. That's good. That is a good release of control because it's just because it's too much otherwise. It, it absolutely is. One of the things I encourage people to do is make a list of all of the things that are uncompensated, invisible, that you manage and almost do a time study for yourself and kind mm. of go through the week. And 
make a list of those things. And then you can have in a calm moment, a conversation (laughs) about like, okay, well, here are all the things for us, the family, the household, the community, some of you who may not be parents who are like, oh, well, I don't have to worry about that. I bet it's happening in your workplace. Mm. I bet it's happening in your family of origin unit. It's all the things like planning special occasions, planning Mm. vacations, all of those things, even if they're fun things, take up capacity. And there are so many things that could go on this list. And I hear women say things like, oh, well, my husband does the the cooking. Great. That's one thing. Okay. I bet if you made a list of the emotional jockeying that you do, how many of you are managing people's moods, like interceding and buffering in relationships instead Mm -hmm. of just letting people learn how to pick up their power and deal with Mm -hmm. one another. There's so much that goes into this. And when you start making these lists and really looking, then you'll start to understand this is why you're tired. This is why you think you don't have time. This is why you're not sleeping. This is part of the reason why you're so irritable because you're doing too much. Yeah. And I think that's such a good homework assignment for everybody who's listening. And I would just offer like, do it, see as a game, can you do it for the awareness, not the blame and notice if the blame or the resentment comes up for sure. And like hold space for that. But I've noticed this like in my friend group. So we read the book a couple of months ago called Fair Play. Mm-hmm. And it's exactly this topic. And what came up for half of these women was just so much resentment. They were like almost pissed that they read the book because they were like, ignorance is bliss kind of. Like, yeah. But it's not, it's really not because right. because to what Susan was just saying, like you're so tired, right? Or fill in the blank, you know, you're not getting enough sleep. Your health is... I'm seeing this with a lot of my friends or like people that are kind of in the sandwich generation. It's like our health is starting to suffer because Mm -hmm. there's just so much on our plate. Mm -hmm. So I think it's normal if resentment or blame or whatever comes up, but like, can you gamify it and challenge yourself to stay in the space of like, okay, this is just for me to become aware. And then I was going to put it back on you, Susan, to like talk about a little bit, like when you're in that calm moment, like Mm -hmm. she just sort of said it, like she just sort of said it real, real quick, but like, how do we get calm (laughs) about this and then bring it up to our partners? Cause I am not calm after. Well, listen, my personality is pretty spicy as well. (laughs) And so listen, take it from me. I did it all the wrong ways because like (laughs) I was saying, like I didn't really have the language for it. And what I would do was I was full of resentment and blame. And I would say things like, I bet if we had investigative journalists follow each of us around (laughs) for a week and gave us each a score of who did more, I do more. And I was so adamant that I wanted to win this argument. I'm talking in therapy sessions, me just going off about how much more I did. And I was correct, okay? Yeah. But when you go at your spouse or partner like that, they automatically are going to get defensive and want to list all the things they Mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. And so we're not saying, and this is, I'm just here to tell you all, This is for your awareness and understanding. And the goal cannot be that they agree or understand because honestly, when you're coming from a place of privilege, which men are, and they have been raised in a culture that centers them, they aren't going to get it the way we do. They're just Mm. not going to. So you got to relax around that and think about, okay, what is it that I want to have happen? I want to lighten my load. And so let me approach this in a factual way where Mm. it's like, okay, here are all the things that it takes to run this house and run this family. And Mm we're going to divvy it up. So let's talk about what I'm going to do, what you want to do. And there may be 
some interesting multiple conversations that need to happen. But I just want to say, like, I have been the most successful at it when I have not been pointing the finger or blaming or resentful. Am I still sometimes blaming and resentful even today as an empty nester? You bet your butt. I mean, listen, because it is what it is. We're human. Oh, I know. I I just flipped out on my husband for coming home at 509 instead of five. (laughs) He's like, it's 509. I'm like, okay, fine. You're right. But I'm still mad at you because I didn't get to take a shower the way I wanted to take a shower now. (laughs) You know what? We need that shower time. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. I'm like, don't you want me to be showered like for our date night? He's like, no, I like the way you smell. And I'm like, oh my God, I hate you. (laughs) I mean, well, interestingly, I just caught myself last night. So I'm getting ready to fly out later today to Napa for a VIP day with a client. Mm -hmm. And then I go from Napa to DC for another VIP day. And in the middle of that, instead of, okay, y'all listening, I live in Evansville, Indiana, which has a regional airport. So getting anywhere is such a trek. And so instead of like going to Napa and flying home and then flying from home to DC, I'm taking a direct from Napa to DC and which gives me a couple of extra free days. And it just so happens that my husband's birthday is coming up next week. So I'm surprising him with, and I told him last night, Because he was like, wait, when are you coming home? And I was like, oh, I have to break the surprise now because he was like, you're going to be gone a whole week. What? And I was like, (laughs) okay. So here's why the flight schedule is like this. And over the weekend, you're going to join me on the coast of Maryland. I rented an Mm -hmm. Airbnb before my client's VIP day on Monday. Anyway, he was all excited, right? And I said, now I have not booked your flight yet, but here's the flight I was thinking you want, which is a direct from Nashville to DC. And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I was going to book this flight for him. And then I was like, I said, I'm just going to send you the link so you can book it. And he was like, yeah, yeah, send me the link. But it was like my habit was to just take care of it for him even teaching this. And after all this time. So, okay. So that's exactly, that's one of the avenues I wanted to go down. Is like, how did this, and I think for some of us, it's like obvious, but for some others of us, it's not like, how did this come to be? Like, because it's just like, it feels accidental or defaulty kind of Mm -hmm. like, how did we get into this position? Because I don't think it's really, our partner's fault or our fault really, but it's like, it's a bigger kind of societal issue. Yeah. So if you could speak to that, like, how did we get here? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So many of us are like, how did this happen in my life? Well, here's in a nutshell, it's the patriarchy. So we all have been steeped since birth in a culture that teaches us, right? Like even when women went back into the workforce, it wasn't, hey, now we have two, studies show that with two partners working, and we're talking about heterosexual relationships here, full-time, the working mother still does like 70% of the household responsibilities. And so research also shows that men on average enjoy five more hours Mm -hmm. of free leisure time per week. And so I don't think any of us would say, yeah, sign me up for 70% more work than him Mm -hmm. and give me five hours less free time a week. What Mm -hmm. has happened is that, okay, yes, like go to work and have a career and have your passions and all those things. But what hasn't caught up is the division of mental, Mm -hmm. emotional labor in the household. So women have literally been doing it all, like, right, you can have it Mm -hmm. all, but we're doing it all. Mm -hmm. And so now the attitude has been like, oh, well, we're just better at nurturing or we're just Mm -hmm. better at certain things. And it's like, actually, we're gonna fight back on that and say that these kids benefit from fathers being more involved, 
doing things right. Like those kids that are wearing, not wearing Hannah Anderson and the mismatched clothes. There's so much goodness there. <laughs> oh, right? there is. It, right. It's there's true. so much goodness there. And I can see it like clear as day, just, just yeah. being in their house. Right. They're like our really good friends. Like I can yeah. just see it. Yeah, totally. We got here because of culture at large and attitudes. And there are still like, listen, probably some of your listeners are going to have a hard time hearing mm. yeah. that they shouldn't be the ones doing certain things or that certain things aren't women's jobs. Yeah. Well, and I just think what's so great is like, we're just having the conversation and putting it on the table and then you get to decide you as the listener get to decide, but at what cost is you doing all like, what is it costing you? Yeah. You can live and die against that to-do list, but like, what about you on your, I mean, here we go. Let's get dramatic. Like, what about you on your deathbed? Are you going to be so <laughs> leave it to me to just like give the tough love, but you know, you started at Susan. So, um, <laughs> so it's like, are we really going to be in our deathbed and be like, yeah, we checked all the boxes. We folded all the laundry and we, you know, worked our booties off and back to the point I was making earlier. It's like, I'm seeing, and I'm, I'm seeing with the, this with men too, but a lot of women just in my circles or in my community are having health issues. Yeah. Yeah. And I can't help but wonder if it's because of stress, because of how much is on our collective plate, right? And we just, I think, forget that we actually do have a choice, but making the choice to take some things off of our plate is not going to be comfortable in the initial, like it's going to suck. And most there's going to be there will be pushback, right? That, yeah, like, it's going it to will... suck for you and for your partner in the beginning. Like this is a marathon. If you decide to take this on and like, you know, make your household or whatever more equitable or, you know, make the invisible visible or however you want to say it, like it's totally a marathon, not a sprint. And it's not going to be super comfortable, but it's so worth it because like your life is on the line, like your freedom or your liberation or you being on your deathbed being like, yes, I had time to like enjoy the blue sky or like skip with my kids down the street or, or whatever. Like, so yeah, I think that that's, it. that's the perfect point. It's like, do you want your children to remember you folding laundry or skipping oh. with them? And the oh, solution, the me too. I had so many moments like that where I was like, I don't want my children remembering me this way because I was burnt and tired. And in fact, oh, hilarity, let me tell you this okay. quick story. Tell me. Cora, who is 23, she has a roommate and she lives in Brooklyn and she loves her roommate. They get along really well. However, Cora, she's out of college. She has her first real salary job she has to get up early, <laughs> mute to the office, right? <laughs> and her roommate has a more flex schedule with her job and goes oh. out a little bit more. <sighs> and Cora <laughs> sent me a series of texts recently where she said, mom, I just have to apologize. I see now why you had so much rage in the <laughs> middle of the night towards teenage me and Ryan when we would disrupt your sleep. And she said, I had no idea. And she went on to tell me the story about how her roommate and her friend woke her up multiple times. And she went out with her hands on her hips to say, I have to get up for work in the morning. And she said, I'm turning it to my mother. And I'm like, exactly. Like yeah. I was the one who was getting up out of bed to correct these teenagers and yeah. Scott would sleep through it. Oh, I know. Right? So let me tell y'all something. You better be making these lists and having these conversations and offloading this nonsense because your absolute health is at risk. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. And that's why I wanted to talk about it. Not only because it's just another trap that we can find ourselves in and an opportunity for, for freedom, but also it can be the reason why we don't weigh what we want to weigh or we don't have the health that we want or the bodies we want or whatever, fill in the blank, right? or the relationship with food or relationship with our bodies that we want is because that is so to me, like 
being at peace, living in my body is the one of the most important things. But from a cultural perspective, it's not urgent. Mm -hmm. So because for a lot of us, it's important, but not urgent, it like gets put at the bottom of the list. And so like the yummy mummies <laughs> inside the yummy mummy experience or inside the yummy mummy method, I have the yummy mummies if they want to journal every day, but like the journaling practice is going to be number 28 on the list. Right. If we don't see the importance of it and also look at the unimportance of some of the stuff we're doing, or at least maybe it is important, but at least the ability to offload it to your point. You really want to think about the things that you are you you are in charge of and really question why am I in charge of this? Mm. Like making the kids' medical appointments, buying all the the gifts for the holidays. Mm. One of the things that I did pretty early on was saying, like, hey, here's everyone you're responsible for buying holiday gifts for and the stocking stuffers and the whatever. Uh, go through everything yeah and make sure that that's not robbing you of the time and capacity you need to devote to yourself yeah yeah so well said i know i a long time ago i let go of that i'm like do you want to get gifts for like your family and my husband's like no and i'm like okay great so we're just going to be the weirdos that don't get your family presents i mean they're not a big gift gifty family so it's fine but it's, it's true because if I were spending all that time buying all those people gifts, then I'm not like taking my kids to whatever freaking Santa brunch and having a silly fun time because right. I don't have time to do that. So you talked a little bit about the solution, like making a list, but let's give them like a carrot because I think some of the listeners can like get on board. They're like, yes, I can see the benefit of doing this. I want to do this. But why should we want to solve this? Why should we make this a priority? And why is it compelling for our partners? Mm. Well, because I mean, everyone suffers under the patriarchy, right? So if you took that little example of the father who's getting the kids dressed, right? There's, and I said, there's so much goodness from that there's goodness for the kids, but also for this dad, right? Because there's a different level of connection that can happen for the partner in the household if they are in it, mm. right? They're in it. They know what's mm. going on. They're a part of the family in a way different way than just mm. sort of being a, I don't want to say passive, that's not the right word, but passive bystander and what's happening in the day to day. And ultimately the sales advocacy job that I have done with this in my own family is that, you know, the age old saying, if mama ain't happy, ain't yeah. nobody happy. Okay. Yeah. And if my health, mental health and my physical health is improved, then the entire household benefits, the entire yeah. community benefits, yeah. right? We have 50% or more of the population suffering in this way. Mm. And if we grow our capacity in time and have the ability to dream and play and mm. devote ourselves to our passions, everybody benefits. Mm. So I would argue that any partner that doesn't want to see their partner happier that's a different conversation that that needs yeah. to be had but yeah. like just be, basically saying like hey something's got to give here and it's not my mental health i totally agree i got this vision of like moms just walking around moms and women just walking around like kind of these like they're just like the walking dead and it's just like they're yeah. just shells of themselves because they're so exhausted by the to-do list and it's like that's not who your partner married like a walking dead version of you and right. so i think about that too like your partner married you because of xyz because you're passionate or you're lit up by who knows what some contribution or some 
Eve Rodsky talks about like your unicorn space or whatever, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. and so it's like, that's where I think these partners really benefit. It's like, they, they get their partners back if their partners are allowed or, or like in the heterosexual sexual marriage, like the husbands get the wife that they married back when right. their wives are not drowning on these to-do lists. I think that like, that's a huge plus for these men too, is like men or partners, whatever, is that they get the marriage that they thought they were signing up for. Exactly. And I think that it's just interesting when you think, when your visual of like all of these moms walking around as zombies, right? And I think that a lot of us as moms bonded over Mm -hmm. how ridiculous the invisible workload is, but we did call it that, right? This is just momhood. And I'm out to say, no, it's not, okay? It doesn't have to be that. So then all this mommy wine bullshit, everybody coping by over-drinking, overeating, gossiping, extramarital affairs. I mean, listen, the amount of shenanigans that goes on to try to cope with the invisible workload, right? You want to save your marriage. Yeah. Start getting this shit off your plate. Yeah. Well, it's such a good point too. Cause I'm like, yeah, there's no time to journal, but like, also if you're so exhausted, you have to eat the gummy bears or drink the bottle of wine or whatever at 9 PM to like self soothe or for some relief because there's no true pleasure or real pleasure, like filling your cup up. So we have to do it with like these false like BS ways that are, that I totally understand. Don't make yourself wrong or bad for eating the (laughs) gummy bears at 9 PM. But I think you're right. It can become like a form of like, I mean, this sounds a little dramatic, but like trauma bonding a little bit. Like that's exactly what it is. Yeah. And it's like, it's, I'm for it. If we're going to move forward together and help each other, kind of like I have to give our book club credit, right? Cause we're talking about this problem, but like we're solution oriented and we're supporting each other and having these conversations, but it doesn't help if we're just complaining and not doing anything to solve for it. Well, and I'm all for conscious complaining, right? I think that we need to talk about these things and and so we don't feel so alone and move towards a solution, like you said, and, and something easy, really baby step that people can try out. And one of my favorite things to do, even especially with my 20 somethings, my 20 somethings a life coach as a mom, they, I have to have strong boundaries with these kids because they, they will bring it all. And something I love to say to everyone in my family is let me know how you resolve that. I trust you to come up with a solution because it's like, I am not like yeah. Yoko. No. Oh, I yeah. am not your therapist on Fixer. call. Okay. Yeah. And I'm also not going to solve all your problems for you. So they'll bring you, that's the other thing, moms, they'll bring you their stuff. And I'm not saying, right, with little kids, you don't help them. Of course, yeah. But I'm just saying, like, especially with partners being like, well, what do you think you should do? And I, you know, I trust you to figure it out Mm -hmm. when they can't find something that's right in front of their face. Yeah. Don't get up and go find it for them. (laughs) <laughs> oh, and it can be so tempting to just do the thing because it's just like, oh, it'll just be easier. But like not in the long run, it will not be. I know my husband the other day, he was like, we had a, like a yogurt parfait, one yogurt parfait left in the, and it was in the fridge. And he comes into the living room and he says, don't we have another yogurt, yogurt parfait? Literally, if you open that refrigerator door is right in front of his freaking eyeballs. And I said, we sure do. And he kind of stood there for a beat. And I just looked at him like, <laughs> oh, you think I'm getting up to point? <laughs> and he just turned around real quick. I'm like, you your ass, you'll find it or you're not getting any yogurt. Yeah. But I think we're conditioned to always be the helper. Yeah. Yes. Y'all sit down. Okay. Let them find it. Well, just even that word, I notice it comes up a lot in the way that we talk. Oh, like my husband is so amazing because he helps me so much. And I'm like, helps you? What do you mean helps you? (laughs) 
Exactly. That's why I'm like, make these lists of, this is not my job. Th these are the things that help this household run. And these are the things that the children need. And no one's helping you. They are a co-parent. They mm -hmm. are also people living, those kids too, living in that yeah. house. Yeah. Everybody contributes to the household, not just you. Oh, it's so, so good. Okay. So tell us, we talked about like a little actionable items that we can do, but your main thing is like, make a list, divvy it up, be calm. <laughs> yeah. And listen, anything else that one thing I will say is that if you do have the resources, you can outsource mm. things that no one wants to do. Right. Mm. So if it is within your budget, when you make the list, you can think about, okay, what can come off the list entirely? There's probably some things that yeah. no one needs to be doing. Everybody's over efforting or you are. And then secondly, okay, who else can do this? That's not me. So if the partner is like, oh, I'm not whatever cutting the grass either, then it's like, okay, well then here's how much it costs to outsource that. Yeah. Yep. And so we, as empty nesters outsource now quite a bit. But then there's the managing of who's doing the, the things that you want to mm. think about as well. Yeah. So I outsource food, yard, cleaning, but guess who's the one managing those subcontractors? Me. Who? <laughs> Me. And so it's like, yeah, all that's off my plate. I am still managing the people it's doing still a it. job. Yeah. And I have relinquished some of that recently yeah. to Scott. And it's like, guess what? If you don't place your food order, you aren't eating Scott. Okay. Yeah. And I think there has to be a willingness for like us to let them fail, which yes. fa fail in quotes, right? Like, okay. Yeah. Like you have to be willing to let your partner actually not have food or like actually miss the appointment or fill in the blank thing. And just like some of them, this is me actually, like I have to learn the hard way sometimes, like let them learn the hard way. Like who cares? Like seriously. And to your point about just getting things off the list, like I took thank you notes off the list and oh my God, that saves me so much time. That's and it doesn't mean I'm not grateful. I, I still say thank you, but they just don't get a card in the mail anymore. And I, I wanted to outsource it to like my husband, but guess what? He doesn't give a shit about thank you <laughs> notes. So there's like a whole conversation there around like, what do we value as partners living in this house? But I think the willingness to really take things off of your list and then like letting people judge you, like I have to be willing to let so-and-so judge me for not sending a thank you card in the mail, even though they send thank you cards in the mail. I'm like, okay, well, when they can I take tell what they you, want. Yes. That's a great example. I let that go too. And I can't remember what year it was, but Christmas cards soon mm. followed because I used to do these elaborate Christmas cards and I made everybody freaking miserable through the process <laughs> of getting the photo and all this stuff. And anyway, all that to say, like, you can really go deep with what are the things that only I care about and am I willing to let it go or outsource it? If your priority is freedom, mm. that changes the whole thing. Yeah. If you're not, and, and I think a lot of us have to look at if we're unwilling to let go of control of certain things, are we getting our value from being a martyr? That was part of my problem. Mm. I had a PhD in martyrdom. I Ooh. love to go around talking about everything I did. Yeah. It's like a dopamine hit, or I don't know if it's dopamine or what chemical it is, but there's a hit that a lot of us women get from being able to hold that identity. Totally. I was like, I think my wake up call really was when Cora was in the second grade and there was no Girl Scout troop at her school. So I started one. And it was like, why am I the troop leader, the cookie mom on the PTA mm. trying to write my first book? I mm. mean, it was a mess. Yeah. And it was a real wake up call for me that I got a lot of my identity and my value from being the mom who did it all. And mm. I had to let go of that identity and value my freedom more mm. 
than feeling important in that way. Yeah. Yeah. So the question then becomes like, who do I want to be in this mm -hmm. like one precious life mm -hmm. and the things on the list, why are they on there? And why am I not willing to let go of the thank you cards? There's like some good meat there because a lot of us don't want to let go of the things is because we're basically just afraid, yeah. I think. Yeah. Because who are we without all that? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, this is like a whole nother podcast now, Susan. I know, I know, I know. There's so much to it. Oh my God. I'll have Susan back and we'll talk about your inherent worth as a person <laughs> and your value. <laughs> but it's true. That's what it comes down to. And it's a, it's a huge opportunity to like have your own back and to remind yourself that you like are worthy because you are plain and simple. Okay. Is there anything else that you want to share before we end? That's question number one. Question number two, tell us how the people can find you if they want to stalk you a little bit. <laughs> oh, well, the easiest way to find me is on Instagram or Facebook at Susan Hyatt. My website is susanhyatt.co. And the last thing I just want to say is anything that you crave, you can create. Mm. And the fastest way to create it is to get stuff off your to-do list and smash mm -hmm. this invisible workload. And you can do it even if there are major arguments that happen at first. You mm -hmm. can get past it, you can get through it, and you deserve to be well-fed, well-hydrated, and plenty of sleep, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally, I love that. Okay, well, thank you so much for coming on. I knew we would have such a good time. Thank you um, for having me. I really appreciate it. So uh, yum moms, go check Susan Hyatt out. She's amazing. And if you liked this episode or the show like at all, go leave us a rating, a review, a follow. Have the best week ever. Ciao, ciao. Hey, if you've enjoyed listening to this podcast, I would love it, love it. If you leave a rate, review, and a subscribe on whatever you're listening to this podcast in, pretty, pretty pleased with a cherry on top. It would help me so much, and it would help all the other mamas out there hear this message. Thank you in advance. I really appreciate it. And you have to come check out the Yummy Mummy Experience. It's my proven lose weight for the last time group coaching and course. Head to lauraconley.com and just click work with me. Other than that, you guys, I would love to give you a free gift. If you want your free listener only gift, go to lauraconley.com forward slash gift. And from there, you will get your free best ever weight loss hack. So cool. The last thing I want to tell you, you guys, is I do have a free Facebook group. It's called, you guessed it, the yummy mummy. Lose weight for the last time and body drama and get food freedom. You can just search that on Facebook or again, you can head to the show notes and you'll find the link there. All right, you guys have the best day ever.